was a time that I swore I would never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was. Amen. You may be seated. Again, it's good to see in the Lord's house this morning. Boy, it's a good day to be in his house, a good day to rejoice and to worship his holy name. And I'm so thankful you're here. Uh, I know Mr. Billy and Miss Linda were mentioned in the prayer request this morning, but please keep them in your prayers. I talked to them this morning. They did have an accident down here on 100 yesterday while reading gas meters. 
and their little uh, mule that they do, a little utility vehicle. They were hit from behind, uh, overturned, and uh, was beat up pretty bad. Brother Billy's got a lot of road rash and, and uh, thought he had some broken bones, but she said everything came back negative from the hospital. No broken bones, but he will go to the orthopedic tomorrow. But please keep them in your prayers. She's just bruised up and banged up. But Brother Billy, he's got a big knot on his head. So y'all pray for them and keep them in your prayers. So uh, I'm thankful that the Lord, I told her this morning, I said, you know what? I said, I'm just thankful the Lord was with you, amen? Because it could have been a whole lot worse. But uh, the Lord was watching over them, and we thank the Lord for doing that. All right, got a, got a great service in store for you this morning. We're going to have baptism service this morning, amen. If some of you feel that humidity in the air this morning, that's because this baptism pool is up here warm and hot and uh, steamy, so we're going to, I don't like cold water, amen, so <laughs> we try to get it warm, so uh, that's why you feel the humidity in the air, and uh, looking forward to that, that's going to be an awesome time. We're going to do that at the end of service today, and then we've got a special call conference after service, and we'll invite anyone that would like to stay to please stay. We're looking forward to all that God's got to do this morning. I know what everybody's thinking this morning. I, I can see it on your face. I mean, I know what you're thinking. But uh, to all of your surprise, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't even watch, amen? Some of y'all say, yes, you did. I didn't either. I got so upset, I went downstairs to keep from breaking something, amen? Got in my study. I, told, I, I was thinking, I was like, there's only so much disappointment a man can take, amen? <laughs> Don't watch the Braves break my heart earlier in the, in the day, and then Georgia did what they did. So I said, I'm just going to go downstairs, and I'm going to get with the one that never disappoints, amen? <laughs> let me tell you something. Your football team may let you down, uh, your, uh, if, unless you're Alabama, amen? <laughs> your baseball team may let you down. Your wife or your husband may let you down, but I'm here to tell you this morning, the Lord will never let you down. Amen. He is faithful this morning. And uh, I, I didn't even know what the end score was so I come back upstairs and went to go to bed. And uh, I'll just say this, that's why I didn't brag, amen. That's why I didn't brag all this time. But uh, I'm okay for everybody that wants to know, amen. It's just a football game. Now, many years ago, I, it might have been a different story, but uh, the Lord has changed my view. But uh, anyway... It's good that we can have fun and joke and, and cut up, but uh, I, I'm thankful for the Lord. I really am. He is dependable, and he is faithful, and uh, he'll, he'll never let you down, never, never disappoint your heart. And uh, I went down there and got, got some encouragement from him last night, and I, I want to share it with you today. So you be much in prayer for the service. I'm going to ask Brother Tony to come and uh, bring, lead us in another congregational song. Let me say this before, I, before we go. Uh, don't forget... Offering plates in the back, we, uh, we just drop that in now. We don't send that around. So if you want to share your tithes and offerings, it's in the back. If you don't have it with you, you'd like to do it electronically, we have the Giveify app on the phone. You can download it. You can give directly to Ephesus Baptist Church online, which is working great. I know a lot of you like to do your banking online, so you're available to do that. Or you can send it in. Anybody that's watching at home and you just want to send it in, Mr. Cole's got the P.O. box on our uh, Facebook account that you can see, that you can send your tithes and offerings in. But let me say this, God is faithful, amen. amen. I've heard a lot of churches that are kind of struggling through this pandemic and uh, the kind of services they've been able to have and to have because of the funding has went way down. But let me say this, you have been faithful with your tithes and offerings. I say thank you so very much. And because you have been faithful, God will be faithful to you amen. and your finances, amen. So be faithful to your tithes. They're back there in the back. Let's worship the Lord. Come on, Brother Tony. Let's sing another congregational song. We're going to sing number 235. Brother Kevin, you still got hope the Bible can play today. Hey. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I, I said hope, right? Instead of that, I'm hope. Change coaches and maybe something different will happen. Page number 235. Thank you. 
Sunday has come up, so I encourage you if you have your Sunday special. Yes, sir. Get it ready and let me know what Sunday you can bring your special. Um, this song is about the goodness of God, and it being Pastor Appreciation Month, I couldn't help but just to think how good God has been to Kevin and Nicole, and as well as this church, and I'm just so thankful for y'all. Thank I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. In all my life you have been faithful In all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God I love you, Lord you have led me through the fire and in darkest nights you were close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god and all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. We have a dynamic duo right there, amen? <laughs> I mean, that was awesome. God is good. He is good, amen. I'm so thankful for that song. I'm so thankful for Miss Maggie singing, Brother Randy playing. That was just beautiful this morning. Thankful for the kind words she said this morning about pastor appreciation. I, I appreciate that so much. And let me say this. I appreciate this church allowing us, me and Mr. Cole, to serve you guys and to... Uh, a part of this church and lead this church. Uh, would never thought that this is where the Lord would have me, but I know this is where I'm supposed to be. Amen. amen. And I'm thankful for God and uh, His His leading, His guiding, and His supply. To everything that we do, He supplies all our needs. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. But I thank you for being here this morning. 
being a part of this. I was thinking that she was singing about the goodness of the Lord, that it chases me, amen? Yeah. Kind of thinking about old hound dogs we used to run, amen? They, we had a set of beagles one time, and they'd get on the scent of that rabbit, and they'd chase that thing, and they, they were a little longer-legged dogs, if you know anything about hunting with beagles. They would chase it, and because they were a little longer-legged, longer, longer -legged, if that, if that rabbit did not get away from or we didn't kill the rabbit in front of them, and about three or four rounds the way the rabbit ran, they would catch it, amen? So if you didn't get there fast, it would chase it down till they caught it. I thought that's exactly what God's goodness is, amen? Even if you're trying to get away from it. And some of us so hard-headed, we do. We try to get away from the goodness of God. But it chases us, amen? It pursues us. It tracks us down. No matter where we go or where we hide, the goodness of the Lord will get to us and the Bible says it sometimes comes by the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that draws men unto repentance. And I'm thankful that he keeps chasing me and keeps pursuing me even when I don't deserve it, amen. And even when I don't, don't uh, need it, or I always need it, but even when I don't deserve it and when I'm not looking for it, he's looking for me. And praise his holy name this morning. All right, we're going to, if you got your Bibles this morning, let's turn to the book of Acts. I promise I'm going to preach fast. May be the, uh, I better hold up, amen. I'm going to try to preach fast, <laughs> and uh, I don't want I don't, I don't to say something that may not be true, but uh, I'm going to try to preach fast. I know we've got a lot of business to take care of after the preaching, but I'm uh, thankful for the time of, of baptism this morning. It's an awesome thing. Book of Acts, chapter number 1. Share with what the Lord's laid upon my heart. Give me a thought this week about being in the right place, the place that God has appointed us, and how we, we all have a place. God has a place for us. He's prepared a place for us. It's in heaven. We know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We'll go to that prepared place that he's prepared for us. But until we get there, he's got an appointed place for us, somewhere where he wants you to be, where it's in the middle of his will so he, his goodness and his mercy can find you. They don't have to chase you. They don't have to pursue you, but you're just there. And they, he knows that's where you're at, and his goodness can find you. And I pray this morning that we'll all have a desire to get in God's appointed place for our life. Let's look at it this morning. Acts chapter 1, verse number 4. Let's stand to our feet and honor the reading of the Lord of, uh, Word of God this morning. The Bible says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the other parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a, in a cloud, and received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men were stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, amen, which was taken from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Then they returned, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount of called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when the, they were come in, they went up into the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotus, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this day as humbly as we know how. We thank you for the scripture that we've read this morning. God, we thank you for the singing that we've read this morning, that we've sang this morning. God, I'm thankful for that song, He Set Me Free. God, I'm thankful to be free this morning. God, I'm thankful to be free of the of the penalty of sin and Lord I'm thankful to be free of the power of sin God if I just trust in you and I pray that Lord you set somebody free here this morning there may be somebody here in this place that 
that's lost and undone. God, I pray that you just save them this morning. I pray that you'd encourage the, the disappointed heart this morning. God, I pray that you just help us, Lord, to glorify your sweet and holy name. Help us get to the place that you've appointed for us, God, that there you may be doing or you may be able to do with us what you would have to do. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he died on the cross for our sins. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to preach on this thought this morning, keeping the appointment. Keeping the appointment. How many of you have ever had an appointment that you thought it was very necessary or very important that you keep? Uh, most of the time, if we make an appointment with something, a doctor or a, uh, whatever it may be, to get our cars worked on or to see a lawyer or to see our accountant, we make that appointment, that means it's important enough for us to be there. An appointment is defined as this, an arrangement to meet someone at a particular time and place. Well, I want you to know in the scripture that we read today, Jesus Christ told his disciples, he said, I got an appointment I want to make with you, amen? Uh, as he got ready to go uh, to ascend into heaven and as he got ready to go to the cross even before he was crucified for our sins and shed his precious blood, he began to prepare his disciples' hearts and say, hey, boys, one of these days I'm going. One of these days I'm going to be offered a sacrifice. But listen, don't, don't fear. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be upset because if I go, I'm going to send somebody else to you. I'm going to send my spirit, the Holy Ghost, to come and to live in you and to give you power and to be, give you the witness and the encouragement that you need even as I'm gone. He says, listen, don't, be, don't have trouble or don't be troubled in your heart. So Jesus. And now Jesus has been crucified. He's been put in that borrowed tomb. And after the third day, he arose from the grave victorious. Amen. Praise his holy name. Hey, listen, we serve an alive Savior this morning. Amen. He lives today. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father even now. He got up out of that grave and he's not there anymore. I'm here to tell you because of that, I got hope, amen, because of his getting up out of the grave. But he got up out of the grave. He spent about 40 days with his, with his disciples. And he said, all right. Going back to my daddy's house, amen. I left that place for a while. I came down. I give you all that I need, but I'm going home, amen. I'm thankful for the day uh, that he went back home because he went home. That means he's coming back for you and me, amen. Listen, they said in this scripture, they said this, these angels that showed up as he ascended, they said this, they said, why are you looking up, gazing up in the sky? He said, this same Jesus has left you this way. He's coming back the same way to get you, amen. Listen, what we need to do is start looking up, amen. Listen, our, redem our redemption is drawing nigh. It's getting close. He's coming back. We need to start looking up and getting our hearts and our lives right here on earth and be looking for his return. <clears throat> the Bible says there is a crown for them in heaven, a reward for those who diligently look for his return, amen. There's a crown that's going to be laid up for us there. We need to be looking. <clears throat> but he goes, and before he goes, he says, boys, I got an appointment for you. He says, it's imperative, it's important that you keep this appointment. He said, at this place and this time, I'm going to send something to you. You're going to receive the, the Holy Ghost. He's going to give you power. And he's going to give you the witness that you need to go and preach all over the world. But he said, you won't have the power to go. You won't have the power to do unless you keep that appointment. Amen? You need to keep that appointment. He said that. Listen, there's all different kinds of appointments that we keep. And some of them are for our good. Some of them want for our bad. But listen to this. God's got an appointment for each and every one of us. <clears throat> an appointment and it is an appointed place. Do you know that God has an appointed place for you? Listen, he has an appointed place for your life, the where he wants you to live and how he wants you to live it. Do you know this? Listen to me. Do you know God has an appointed place he wants you to worship? Listen, that's why we have church membership, amen? That's why we go to and come down and say, hey, listen, I want to join this church and I want to worship here because this is where God sent me to be here. Do you know why there's so many Christians that are anemic in this day and time? Why there's so many Christians that are starving to death? Because they are not at their appointed place to worship. Amen. Listen, God will lead you to the place where he will feed you through the man of God, through the word of God. But if you're not in the appointed place that he's put you, 
you won't be fed, amen? But listen, when you know where it's at, when he shows you, and listen, he will highlight it very, he will highlight it very clearly, this is where you want to be, this is where I want you to be. If you'll get there, I'm here to tell you, you'll grow, amen? Where, you, where he plants you, you'll grow. There's a saying that says this, just, just grow wherever you plant it. And you can do that, amen? That's a great thought. But it works a whole lot better when you just grow where he's planted you. Amen. Don't plant yourself somewhere. Just plant where he wants you to be planted and you'll grow. Listen, he wants to meet with us today. Listen, he wants to meet with It's not an accident that you're here today. He brought you here and you've got an appointment to meet from him, with him today and to hear from heaven. We're praying this morning that he'll do that this morning, that he'll keep this appointment. You know, but oftentimes we fail to keep appointments. Let me tell you a little funny story really quick. A few weeks ago, or I guess a few, two or three months ago, I got something in the mail, and I opened it up. First time I'd ever got one, and it was this. You've been summoned for jury duty. I said, Lord, help. I, like I got time to go to jury duty, amen? I, I, I said, Nicole, please remind me that I got jury duty. You know I can't remember my head if it wasn't connected to my shoulders. Please remind me, because if I don't show up, the preacher's going to get arrested. Amen? That's not good. Please remind me. It was an appointment. They said, you got to be here this date and this time. Uh, rolled around. I, I, I forgot all about it. Imagine that. Amen? Forgot all about it. Come in one day. Got something out of the mail. And it was from the probate court place. And I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot about that appointment. I didn't go to jury duty. I looked at the date. It was that day. I was like, man, they are quick with their mail, amen. I mean, I was just supposed to be there today, and they done sent me something and said, we're coming to get you. I was like, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? How am I going to explain this to the deacons? How am I going to get up in front of the church? I'm going to get arrested. I'm going to be on the Channel 5 News. Preacher gets arrested for not showing up. I was like, man, this is going to be bad. So I opened up that letter, and it said, it read this, something like this. I'm paraphrasing here, but it says, Due to the lack of cases, we do not need you to show up anymore for your jury duty. I said, praise <laughs> the Lord. He took care of me, amen. He's faithful. I did miss it, Brother Clyde. I was about to miss it because I didn't pay attention. There's a lot of appointments that we miss in our daily lives. And listen, they, sometimes they... It goes off without a hitch, and it's okay. We can reschedule. We can redo. Other times, there's consequences. But let me say this. The appointments that God makes for our lives need to be kept. It's imperative that we keep those appointments to go where God wants you to go, to do what God wants you to do, because when we keep those appointments, God's presence can show up. Amen? When we're there, listen, this is what the appointment that Jesus was making with his disciples. He's saying, guys, I know I'm here, but I'm going there. But if you'll go to Jerusalem, I'm going, my spirit's going to show up there, and it's going to knock your socks off. Amen. You need to be there. They showed up there. They all gathered together, and they waited for the Holy Ghost. And when he shows up, man, I tell you, he'd done something that they had never seen before. He'd get a heart turned a heart full of courage. Hey, listen, people that didn't know what was going to happen wasn't worried about what was going to happen anymore. People that was anxious about those that were going to destroy them became bold to go to preach the gospel to them. Listen, the Holy Spirit showed up and changed everything in their life. Changed everything. Listen, he can do the same thing for you this morning, amen. If you'll just get where God wants you to be, he'll show up in your life. He'll change your life. He might change the direction of your life. He may change your eternity this morning, amen, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He'll change your life if we just got to get in that appointment. I like studying about the early church because they got the same, they got a lot of the same needs that you and I have. Listen, they needed power. In this day and hour, more than ever, we need power. You're right, man. Not our power, his power. Right. The Holy Ghost's power. Listen, if we're going to stand in this world, they were persecuted for following Jesus Christ. Remember what they did when they, when they took Jesus, all them disciples scattered. But the Holy Ghost brought them back together. Listen, in this day and time, we're persecuted, whether you believe it or not. It ain't got here yet, but it may be coming. But I'm here to tell you, you know what they're, they're going to try to do, what the devil's going to try to do to us? Scatter us. 
But you know what the Holy Ghost will do? He can keep us together. Amen? Amen. Listen, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says, For the love of Christ constraineth us. You know what that means? That means it holds us together. Amen? It means it holds us together. But the only way that we'll do that is we get in that place where He's appointed for us to be. And I'm not just talking about church membership. I'm talking about all areas of our life. Getting in the middle of the will of God. How many of us are living outside of God's will? How many of us are doing what I want to do? How many of us are making decisions that we want to make? Because if we listen to God, that don't really make sense. Because God wants me to do this. I feel in my heart what God wants me to do. But that don't make sense. Listen, that's what faith is all about. Believing in something and trusting in something that really don't make a whole lot of sense. But just realizing that, hey, I know God's got my best interest in heart. But we have to get to that appointed place. But they needed power. They needed power. They needed unity. Listen, they were scattered. They were separated. But he brought them together. Can I tell you what we need today? Unity in the church. I'm not just talking about Ephesus. I'm talking about the church worldwide. We need unity to stand united on the principles that we believe in, the doctrines that we believe in, and even each. Listen to me. There's a lot of places that's backing down because other places, secular places or secular powers say, well, times have changed and you need to change. No, we don't. We're going to stand on this word of God, amen. We're going to put our, dig our heels in and say, listen, we're going to stand on what the word of God says. No matter what the world says, we're going to stand on what the word of God says. And be, that's what they had to do. They had to get united. They got united, they got power, and they got this special appointment. That they need. Now listen, I want to share with you three real quick things of what Jesus had promised. Listen, I want you to know this. Jesus had promised he would send the Spirit. The promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit was a conditional promise. Do you know God has many unconditional promises he makes to us? That means you don't have to do anything. You just, it's just there. You don't have to meet any conditions. But the biggest majority of God's blessings that come in our life come with conditions. Listen, a lot of people want to think, I can live how I want to, do whatever I want to, and when I ask God to do something, he's got to do it. No, he don't. Listen, your blessings are conditional on a lot of different levels. If you want God to bless your life and be good to your life, then you need to do all his word. But listen, his promise of, his, of the coming of the Spirit was conditional. Contingent on the actions of the disciples had to keep. Listen, his coming wasn't conditional, but them being a part and being there for his coming was conditional. He said, if you're going to be a part of the coming of the Holy Ghost, you're going to have to meet these conditions. And I'm going to share with you what they were here in just a minute. But listen to this. I got this quote from a book, and I thought on the Holy Ghost, it says, any time a divine manifestation is promised, there will be always be certain and detailed instructions that precede that manifestation. What I'm saying is, when the Lord shows up, he'll give us directions, instructions of where to get to so we can be there when it happens. Amen? He'll give us instructions. Some of y'all are here this morning for the first time. Some of you are here this morning for the first time in a long time. You didn't just come here by accident. Lord put it on your heart to be here. You know why? Because he wanted you to be in that appointed place. Amen? He wanted you to get that place where I'm going to show up and I'm going to speak to your heart this morning. And you met that condition this morning. Amen? You were old. But you obeyed him. You were faithful. You came to the house of God. I, and listen, this has been my prayer since last night. God, those that obey and come, meet with them this morning. Amen. I mean, surround their hearts. Give them power. Give them that moving of the Holy Ghost in their life that they stand in need of. But it will always come with detailed instructions. We need to realize if we're going to experience the presence of God, we will have to follow God's directions. Some of you have done that today, and I'm thankful for that. He gave them these very specific instructions, and they followed them. Listen, these disciples followed them faithfully. They did everything that he said to do. And we're going to see what happens because of that. Listen, number one, he gave them instructions to go to an appointed place. Listen, look what Jesus said. Verse number four, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Listen, it says in verse 12 that they wouldn't even in Jerusalem when he left. The Bible says he's in the Mount of Olives. 
when he left, when he ascended back into heaven. But Jesus said, listen, boys, I know you're here, and I know because I'm leaving, you may want to go home. You may want to go to your house. You may want to go see some friends. Some of you may want to go back to work, go out on those fishing boats and start fishing again like you, like you did before. Peter tried to do that and realized he wasn't any good at the beginning. He didn't get any better after, after Jesus left, amen? Well, no need going back. But he's saying, I know there's a lot of places and a lot of things that you want to do. But if you want to be touched by the Spirit, you've got to go to Jerusalem. You've got to go to an appointed place. Can't go any place. Can't go to your house or their house or mother-in-law's house or father-in-law's. You've got to go to Jerusalem, to the place I've appointed you to go. You know, a lot of us want to, want to do what we want to do. On a Sunday morning, the appointed place to meet with God is where? The house of God. That's why you're here this morning, isn't it? You come faithfully believing if you come to the appointed place to meet with God, he'll be there. And I've heard a lot of people say this, oh, Brother Kevin, you can have church wherever you're at, and you're absolutely right. There's a lot of people this morning watching online that's having church in their living room. But I'm telling you, there's a special place. There's a special presence when you come into the appointed place. You can have church wherever you want to. This is the problem. You won't. The problem is it's not that you can't have church, that probably you won't have church unless you decide, I'm going to come and meet with the Lord at the appointed place. But listen, we want to go here, there, and everywhere. But God says on my day, on the Lord's day, let's come to the house of God. David said this, my heart was happy and I was glad when they said, let us go unto the house of God. Amen. Listen, how many of you come in there this morning and was glad because you seen some friends, you seen some family. Hey, man, you felt this morning. There was a gladness that come upon your heart. Every time I walk in this place, I get glad because he's here. But listen, this is the appointed place for us to worship. They had to go to Jerusalem. But we had we have to come here. Not just any place to do. Just Jerusalem. He said you have to go to Jerusalem. God always has an appointed place. He has an appointed place. Listen, I know what some of you are thinking. Yeah, but, but God's omnipresent. God's everywhere and everywhere. That's right. He is. And he can be anywhere. At, and he is everywhere at all times. But I know this this morning that he has always been in an appointed place, God. He says there is a time and a place. Think about this. What did he tell Moses? When Moses said, when he said, Moses, I got to meet with you. Got to give you them ten commandments. What did he tell him? He said, I'll just go anywhere you want to. He said, no, you come up the mountain. Climb the mountain and meet with me. It's an appointed place. Have you ever thought about uh, the, the prophet Elijah when that drought came on? And he said, Elijah, Wherever you want to, I'll take care of you. That ain't what he said, was it? He said, I've prepared a place. You go down to Zarephath. Go to my appointed place. And there they will take care of you. Listen, Elijah just couldn't have went anywhere he wanted to. He had to go there because that's where God had prepared a place to uh, take care of him. It was his appointed place. Man. Listen, what about John the Baptist? When John the Baptist came, John the Baptist went out to the wilderness. Amen. He lived in the wilderness. Who wants to go to the wilderness and live? Nobody. But that's where God had prepared a place, an appointed place to meet with John the Baptist, to give him all that he stood in need of, to be the forerunner of Christ when he came out. God has always been an appointed place, God. And God has an appointed place for you, an appointed place for us to worship, an appointed place for us to live, an appointed place for us to do what God wants us to do, an appointed place an appointed place to pray. How many of you got an appointed place in your house to pray? God, give me a place where you can meet with me in my house every day. He will appoint a place. Listen, they did. They went there. Listen to this. There will be no provision from God until we get to the appointed place of God. God will provide all the provision, but it's not until we get where he wants us to go, until we get there. Can I share something out of my, my personal life real quick? When I was younger and a teenager, me and my wife just had got married. My kids were just growing up. Uh, I know I knew I was saved, but I wasn't living like I was supposed to be. And I knew I had to get in the church. I, I wanted to get into church, not necessarily for me, but for my children. Because I knew my children need to hear about Jesus. That my children need to be brought up in church. And I said, Nicole, we got to go to church. So we visited some churches. We went to our whole home church and we, we went there for a while, but we just didn't feel that's where we needed to be. We went to some other churches. We, 
we, we, we visit two or three. We didn't visit many. But then one day we went up to this little old church up on the hill over next where we live. Walked in that place. I said, this is the place God told me to be. I sat in there cold and hard for a long time until one day God moved. But listen, he provided everything I needed for my life and the rest of my life because I was in the place where he wanted me to be. That was the place that I needed to be, and he appointed it there. And because of that, I, I am where I am today, amen, because I got in that appointed place. Amen. Let me ask you this. Are you in that appointed place? Are you in that place where God wants you? Everybody be real, real truthful with your own self this morning. Am I where God wants me to be? Or am I fighting where God wants me to be? Am I serving? Or am I, am I going to the church where God wants me to go? Am, am I here or am I, am I waiting too long? Is this the place? Yeah. Hey, listen, if God's told you it's the place, that's all you need to know. You're here. Amen. But listen, not only that, if you're, are you walking where God wants you to walk and how God wants you to walk? Are you there in that appointed place? The correct position to serve, the correct place uh, that, that can make no sense. But listen to this. Just imagine if every one of us, all Christians, got in the appointed place where God had for their life. Could you imagine what would happen to this world? I tell you, I know of 120 people that got in the appointed place and they turned the world upside down. They shared the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. You and I have the gospel today because these 120 people were in the right place that God sent them to do. They got empowered. They got encouraged. They got sent out. And because of that, you and I got the gospel. Amen. It, it all started right there is where, how we got the gospel here this morning. Listen, if you're here and you're lost, there, he, the reason you're hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, was put in the grave and on the third day and rose again, offering salvation to you is because these people got in the right place what if we all got in the right place we say boy this world's a mess yeah but we could turn it around if we just get in the right place not only is it the right place but it, or the appointed place but the appointed time listen verse number four says this and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father which saith he hath heard me. You know what he said? He said, get there and wait. How many of y'all like to wait on appointments? Let me tell you what's the most aggravating thing that you can ever do in your life is when you make an appointment to see a doctor and you get there at on time or a little bit early, you say, I'm here, this is the appointed place, we're going to meet together with this doctor, and he makes you sit there for an hour. That's, I, I, that can make your blood pressure go up. Listen, if y'all know my daddy, he, when he goes does that, sometimes he, he makes appointments and he has to go do his physicals. He drives a, a, a transfer truck. And uh, he makes sure he goes to a place that doesn't have a weight. Because if he does, he's went to two or three that had a weight and his blood pressure was so high, by the time he got to do his physical, he, he failed it, amen? Because that'll make your blood pressure go up. But listen, that's what Jesus told him. He said, I want you to go to Jerusalem and wait. Sometimes we've got to be patient because God works in his timing, right. not ours. Right. Listen, how, how long did they wait? Bible, if you read about it, they were gathered together for some 10 days waiting for the Holy, Scope, or Holy Ghost to show up. Just waiting. And listen, I want you to know this. There's purpose in waiting. There may not be purpose in waiting in a, in a waiting room at, at the doctor's office. I don't know that purpose. But there's purpose with God in the waiting. Amen? There's a purpose in the waiting. What was the purpose in them waiting? So when they were all gathered together, it says that they were all gathered together in one accord. They all got on the same page together. Hey, listen, there's 120 people come together. How many of y'all think they all had the same thoughts of how everything ought to go? I bet you they were not two or three together that had the same thoughts of where they want to go. But when they came together and they waited, God got them all on the same page. They all got a one accord. That's what we need to do, get a one accord. Sometimes waiting gets its own accord. It says not only did they get a one accord, but they were a one accord. How? In prayer. It was in prayer that they got a one accord. 
uh, when they got together and waited, they just wasn't sitting around kicking their feet up waiting for God to show up. They got down and got earnest in their prayer, began to pray for God. That's 120 people praying that God would show up and show what he wanted to do. Uh, they had an appointed time, and all these things that they did, they, they prayed and made supplication all together, but they had to wait. Some of you still waiting on Jesus today to show you what he wants you to do. Let me say this, just be patient. In his time, he'll show you exactly what he wants. But you've got to be in that appointed place, the place that he's told you to go, and then wait for him to show you. Some of you waiting, and he's about to show you, I've got a place for you to serve, amen? Right. He's about to wait, you're, you're waiting. He's about to say, hey, listen, this is where I want you to work. This is what I want you to do for my name. So just wait on God. Listen, he's not going to be late, amen? Yeah. He's always on time. He's an always on time God. Yeah. An appointed time. They told them to wait. Some of us may have to wait, but let me say this. When you get there to that appointed time, and you're waiting, God will show up, and that appointed time will change your life. Amen. It'll change you to, in, to what you need to be. Third thing I'm done. It's not only an appointed time, an appointed place, but an appointed mission. He gave them something to do. God always gives us something to do. He's never called one Christian and said, all right, you're saved, you don't have to do anything. Never done that. We all got a mission. We all got something to do. The mission that they had was in verse 8. He said, you'll receive power, and after the Holy Ghost has come upon Amen. you, you shall be witnesses unto me. He's called us to Every appointed place of God comes with an appointed mission of God. Every time he gets you in that place, he's going to give you a mission. And we all should be looking for the mission that God has for us to reveal, to witness, to be what he would have us to be. The mission can, listen, I want you to notice this, though. The mission that God has for us cannot be accomplished in our own power. It has to be accomplished in his power. That's why he said, go to Jerusalem, wait, and then you'll receive power. Because you can't do this on your own. He could have sent them right out from the Mount of Olives. So y'all go out and start preaching. Y'all go out and start teaching. Y'all go out and start telling people about Jesus and what I've done. But listen, that wouldn't have got anything accomplished because they didn't have power. But when the Holy Ghost showed up, they received power. They received boldness. They received anointing to preach and to share and to witness to somebody. That's why we need that. We need that power to fulfill our mission. We need to seek his appointment. Let me just say this. We need to keep his appointment. I want to share with you real quick. There's one more appointment that we'll all keep. The Bible says this. It is appointed unto man wants to die in the judgment. That's an appointment that every single one of us will keep. You won't be late for it. You won't be able to reschedule it. None of us know when it's, when it's coming. But it is an appointment. We all have one. Some of us, uh, some people that we know really close had one last week. Or it, we never know when that appointment comes, but we do have that appointment. But what we have to be uh, sure of is this. Are we, are we prepared for that appointment? Listen, there's an appointment under man wants to die, then the judgment. We're all going to give an account of with what we did with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, you'll, you'll stand and give an account to God one day when you receive the, the, the word of God and you've heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's going to say, what did, you do with it? did you receive it? Did you believe it? Or did you put it in the back of your mind or let it go in one ear and out the rest? He said, listen, there is going to be judgment. And for those that don't take it seriously and for those that don't accept it and for those that don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, he'll say this, he'll say, Depart from me, ye who work iniquity, for I never knew you. But I want you to know this. You don't have to hear them words. You can also hear these words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know how you hear those words? By trusting and believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to know something today. If you're lost and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, he died on that cross for you. You say, why did he die on that cross for me? Because he loves you, amen? amen? And he wants you to be saved. And he wants you to be cleansed of your sins. The Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, every single one of us. And the, and the wages of our sin is death. But the gift of God amen. is everlasting life, amen? He gives us everlasting life if we believe by faith what Jesus Christ has done. Through his marvelous grace, he's given this gift to us. We just got to believe it. 
I wonder if there'd be one here this morning who would say this, I've, I've never made that decision. I've never asked Jesus to come into my heart. You can, amen. Today may be that appointed time that you can make that decision. All you have to do is come and put your trust in him, believe that Jesus died and resurrected and is alive today, and you can be saved. The Bible says by faith, or we're saved through grace, or by grace through faith. All you got to do is believe. I wonder if there'd be one this morning that would do that. Let's stand to our feet. Uh, if you need to come use the altar this morning, or I, I just want to ask you this. Are you in that appointed place this morning? And you know that you're in the place that God would have you to be. If you're not, you can get there. And he'll give you them instructions if you'll just ask him, God, I want you to show me where I need to be, what I need to be, and what I need to be doing. He'll show it to you this morning if you'll ask him. If you're lost this morning need to be saved, you can come, come take me by the hand and say, Preacher, I've never been saved. I want to be. I can show you how to do that this morning. You may have been saved already, but you've never come forward in a crowd and said, Listen, I got saved, and I want to be baptized, and I want to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. You can do that at this time. If you want to come forward and say, Hey, I've been saved, you can share that testimony, how you were saved, and say, I want to be baptized and follow the Lord in believer's baptism. You come do that. Whatever the Lord has put upon your heart, let's pray. Lord, we come to you this day as humble as we know how. We thank you for your many blessings. Lord, just use it for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You come this morning. Lord's dealt with your heart, spoken to your heart. You come. Not going to drag this service on, but if you need to do business with the Lord, you come. Thank you.
His heart was broken, mine was mended. He became sin, now I am.